I have no more things to do with you, so you must leave this house. We are a family of three, so we don't need you anymore. Are you saying I'm not family? Of course not. Why do you think you are our family? You are undereducated. We don't need incompetent people. I grew up in a single mother's home and worked hard after high school. My mother-in-law called me incompetent and not a family member. Even though I am the one who earns 50 million yen and supports this life. How come she is so very bullish? Can they pay their hefty living expenses without me? Well, since she is asking me to leave, there's no need for me to worry about such things. I understand. Well then, take care. If she hates me that much, I'll leave as she wishes. A week later, however, I received a devilish phone call from my mother-in-law, who had turned pale. Hey, come home. I can't live without you. Even though she finally realized how important I was, it was already too late. I'm sure she's already been through hell, but she needs to go through more hell to get me to stop my anger. The moment I told my impatient mother-in-law my answer, she was speechless. I am a 29-year-old woman living in New York, currently earning a reasonable income from investments and businesses. I had no desire to be scattered, so I was saving money, but the only thing I was spending money on was filial piety to my mother. My parents divorced when I was very young, and my mother raised me as a single mother. My mother sacrificed a lot while working part-time to raise me, and I was truly grateful to her. So I did not go to college, worked around after high school and sent money home, and I still send enough money to live wealthy. I also take her on overseas trips several times a year, and my filial piety for my mother is what motivates me in my current job. One day, while I was leaving such a life, I met a man through a friend. He said, It's really amazing that you are running a company even though we are the same age. I respect you so much. He really respected me and I was getting more and more attracted to his humanity. And we went straight into a relationship and got married a year later. My mother was worried about my marriage, but later she was really happy for me because I was doing work only before. Then, right after we got married, I was invited to a dinner party at his house. Is it true that you haven't gotten a job? Huh? My son tells me that you are running your own business, but you aren't making any money at all, are you? Your clothes look poor too. You're an adult man, you should work hard. She seemed to have misunderstood me. But if I told her specifics such as how much money I make per year, it will sound like sarcastic. And earning money itself is not something to brag about, so I was just passing it off. In fact, I told her that I was paying more of the living expenses and that I was not burdening her son. That was the end of the conversation. But I knew that her impression of me was not very good. She's a person with old-fashioned ideas and she thinks it's best for me to get a job at a big company. I guess she thinks so, but in this day and age, that's not true. And since I wasn't bothering anyone, I decided not to worry too much about it. Then one day, my husband called me up. I need to talk to you about something. It seems that my mother's chronic illness has worsened, so my father is also worried about it, and they would like to live with us in this house. What do you think? What? You mean your parents are going to move in here? That's what it would mean. My husband consulted me in a normal way, but it was unacceptable to me. Since we got married, my mother-in-law didn't like me very much and the suggestion from husband is totally unacceptable for me. I don't know what would happen if they moved in and lived with us. No, I'm not sure I can live with them. What? You want me to leave my parents alone? Why don't you worry about them a little more? It's not mean that I am not worried about them, but I don't want them to live with us. I'm not saying I'm not concerned, but I'm not concerned, but I'm not going to live with them. There must be some other way. I wanted to refuse to have my in-laws come to this house at any cost, but the discussion with my husband did not go very far. However, my husband understood due to my stubborn refusal. 
one week later, something terrible happened. It was my first day off in a long time, and while I was at home, the intercom rang in the morning. Surprisingly, my parents-in-law came over. I'm sorry to bother you. Huh. First of all, it was insane for them to come to my house without any notice, but to my surprise, they brought a big baggage with them. What is this luggage? What is it? Why are you so surprised? Of course it's a moving package. You didn't want to accept us at all. But I'm glad my son accepted me properly, though. Oh my God. After all that talk and rejection of accepting about their moving, my husband accepted my in-laws without permission. This really surprised me. Moreover, I heard that my parents-in-law's house, which was a rented house, has cancelled the contract already. And since they had brought all their belongings with them, I couldn't kick them out. All I could do now was accept it. However, after this day, my stress level increased to several times what it had been before. Unlike my husband, I often worked at home, but my mother-in-law began to bother me. What are you doing? Pretending to be working? It's not like that. I'm busy, please leave me alone. You're playing around, but you're pretending to be a businesswoman, and wow, you don't even do your chores. How nice of you. I was busy with work and had no time to do housework, but since my in-laws had moved in, I thought my mother-in-law, who had nothing to do at home, would do it. However, my mother-in-law made no pretense of doing housework and began to complain daily about me being absorbed in work instead of doing housework. What's the fun in pretending to work so much? I'm not pretending, and I'm paying my bills, so I have no right to complain. When I said this, my mother-in-law became silent, but her presence irritated me a great deal. It was a stressful life, but it became less stressful as my work became busier and busier. One day, after a month of living like this, I was called by my mother-in-law. When I went to the living room, I found not only my mother-in-law but also my father-in-law and my husband, both of whom were looking at me with serious faces. Listen, I know this is sudden, but could you please get out of this house? What? We don't need you anymore. This house is like ours now, and we don't need you. What do you mean? Originally, we were going to take over this house. There is no way I would ever marry an ugly woman like you. My mind went blank the moment I heard this statement from my husband. I had never thought that my husband, whom I had trusted until then, would say such a thing to me. Of course I had thought that he was really selfish when he brought my parents into the house without my permission, but... I was really surprised that the marriage itself was all part of the plan. Then was it all about the money? You didn't want to marry me, you just wanted a house? Is that all? Well, that's what it comes down to. You don't need this big house, do you? So you can leave, right? The whole reason why he married me and why they made my parents-in-law move in without my permission was all an operation to take this house away from me. But I couldn't just sit back and let them take this house away from me. Okay. I don't want this house anymore, so we don't have to share the property and everything, right? Yes, that's right. I've only been married a little while and I'm not interested, so I don't want it. Okay. My husband promised me that, so I got him to sign the contract. We then proceeded to prepare for the divorce, and in no time at all the divorce was finalized. I never thought my first marriage would end so easily. I was determined to enjoy my new life from now on. After the divorce, it took a few days to complete the various procedures, but finally, when everything was about to be finished, I received a phone call from my ex-mother-in-law. Hello, what is this contract? Contract? Do you mean the rental agreement? She seemed surprised and contacted me. She probably misunderstood that she could get that house. That was an office contracted by my company, not an owner-occupied house. There is no way I would buy a house nowadays, even if I think about asset building. This house was a rental? It is fully furnished, and I thought it was an owner-occupied house. Who told you it was my house? I was renting it as my office and home. 
That's fine. But what is this amount of money? There is no way I can pay $3,000 for rent. Since we are divorced and you are going to live there, we signed a new contract. The rent had been paid by my company, but since it is no longer an office. I said and tried to hang up, but she yelled loud enough to be heard even with my phone away from my ear. I didn't hear you talking like that. You deceived us. What? I didn't mean to cheat you. You really wanted the house, so I gave it to you. I could have continued to live there after the divorce, but if you will live there, you couldn't sign a new lease, so at least I'm being nice, right? When I told her this, she fell silent. She made it sound as if I had deceived the three of them, but I was not the one who deceived them. I was the one who was deceived. Since they had originally deceived me intending to betray me, they had no right to blame me. When I got divorced, I wondered how they were going to pay for their living expenses, but I'm already divorced. Since we were completely strangers, I didn't mention it that much. You stop fooling around. What's the fun in deceiving someone like this? There's no way you can pay this much money. I was paying as much as I could afford, but I can't believe you don't make more money than the people you look down on. You're miserable. Wow, you have two people working and you can't pay them? I was paying for it alone, though. I said in a condescending tone, and she shut it up, looking quite chagrined. However, after a few seconds of silence, she resumed the conversation in a slightly calmer voice. Wait a minute. Does that mean you were earning quite a lot of money? Yes, but... You just realized that now? I don't mean to brag, but I was earning $500k a year. What is that? I didn't hear that you were earning that much. Because you didn't ask me. It's not something I should go out of my way to brag about. I'm not going to brag about how much money I'm making. I wasn't proud of making money per se, and I myself was ridiculed as a child for being poor. So no matter how successful I became as an adult, the only thing I would never do was mount the financial side of things. I had made up my mind that I would never do that. But I never thought you were earning that kind of money. Oh, by the way, rent is not included. The rent was deducted from the company's expenses. Besides, I was able to save a lot of money in one year. I just put it into savings or use it for trips with my mother. This year I couldn't travel at all because I got busy with work. So most of my salary went into savings, though. Then the amount of property division alone must be substantial? I don't need this rental house, so give me my share of the property. She was depressed to find out that the house she thought was valuable was just a rental. But she saw the fact that I had an annual income of 50 million yen in savings dangled in front of her. My ex-mother-in-law immediately jumped at this. If you get a divorce, you have to divide the property. You know that much, don't you? Yes, I do, but haven't you looked at what's in the contract? What? I made sure you signed it, didn't I? I said that after the divorce, there will be no division of property at all. So I am not dividing my property, and I don't intend to divide my savings either. I have signed a contract with my ex-husband. We both signed the agreement. I had told her in front of her that we were not going to divide the property. But I thought she had developed dementia and had forgotten about it. Then she became silent for a moment. But she immediately resumed the conversation. That's invalid. What are you thinking? You tried to cheat me and take away my house, and now you insist that the contract is invalid. Please stop it. If you cause me any more trouble, I will charge you alimony, okay? Alimony. Mm. You have often interfered with my work and harassed me. Besides, I could go to court for marrying me with the original intention of cheating me, right? I think we should consider our position a little more. The moment she heard the words alimony and court, she must have freaked out. She did not complain anymore and was flinching from start to finish. I had nothing more to say to her and thought it was a waste of time, so I just hung up the phone. I told my ex-husband that if he wanted to get a divorce and continue to live in the house, he would have to sign a new lease. Soon after, my husband also contacted me, but I continued to ignore his calls. 
but he called for over 30 minutes straight, and I was going crazy. I reluctantly picked up the phone. Hello. What in the world is going on with you calling me so much? I'm going crazy. Well, can we please not get a divorce? I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. What? Of course you can't do that. Why should I do that? After deceiving me so much, he suddenly said there was no divorce and I was stunned. Well, I can't make a living. You've been paying more for rent and living expenses. I've been using the extra money to buy things, so I'm losing most of my paycheck to credit card bills. My dad thought he could get the house now that he had it, so he quit his job. To buy things, so I'm losing most of my paycheck to credit card bills. What? He quit his job. The company my father was working for had a downturn in business, and they offered a lot of severance pay to those who retired early. Then, why don't you just use these for living? No, my dad is an idiot and bought a car with the money. What in the world is he thinking? I thought, I really can't keep up with stupid people. I knew that my ex-husband's situation was very difficult. I understood that it was tough. But how could he even think of asking for help after he cheated on me? We are already divorced. We are strangers, aren't we? I don't care what you guys do with that house. Or how you live your life. If you contact me again, I will charge you alimony for what you have done, and I will be very thorough, okay? Please, please don't say that. My love for you was certain. I was after the house too, but deep down inside, I was after you. I don't believe in the words of people who cheat others. The world is not that easy. You, as a member of society, know that better than anyone else, don't you? Anyway, don't bother me any more. I said that much and hung up. After that, I turned off my phone and continued to ignore the contact. Then gradually they stopped contacting me. And so I cut myself off from them and started a new life. I don't know the detailed situation of my ex-husband after that, but according to what I heard from our mutual acquaintances, he quit his job. On top of that, he had so many credit card bills that he had very little money to spend on living expenses. The stress of the situation caused him to stop going to work. He stopped paying their credit card bills and is now in the process of filing for bankruptcy. As for my ex-parents-in-law, they used most of their retirement money to buy a car. The remaining cash is quite small, and even with their pension, it is not enough for them to live together. They had no choice but to go back to work, but no company would hire an elderly person as a regular basis, so they are living a simple life while working part-time. My ex-husband and my ex-in-laws dreamed of living in a big house and living a wealthy life, but now they must live the exact opposite. This is the only way for people who judge others by their money, merits and demerits, have nothing but this kind of result waiting for them. By the way, my company's performance has improved, and I am now able to live with my mother and be filial to her every day. After work, I went out to eat with my mother and on weekends we took day trips. I'm really enjoying these days. Did you like this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.